What's going on guys, Dayton here, aka Dr. R Flower back inside the garden. We're gonna do another question and answer video today. Just a couple things before we hop into the video. If you haven't seen my last two videos, I just put out a really good video about the uh, legalization that's happening in Thailand right now. Uh, absolutely crazy what's going on there, go check that out. Also put out a vlog if you wanna see a a Dr. Autoflower vlog and what I do sometimes after harvest definitely go check that out I went to a music festival definitely something I like to do during the summer after harvest because during growing it's a little hard to get out of the house uh, when you're in the midst of it so after it's nice to take a little vacation so definitely check that out if you're interested I'll be putting the links down below also if you want to help support the channel and you're interested in getting new LED grow lights I can hook you up with optic LED discount codes and if you're needing help choosing which light is best for your growing situation you can message me up at drautoflowerled at gmail.com or at drautoflower on Instagram also stay tuned because I'm about to take off to go to Shambhala. If you guys watch my Shambhala video I put out about three months ago, four months ago, it gets pretty wild there. Last time it was raining really hard and this time it looks all sunny so should be getting a lot more footage and uh, should be getting some pretty interesting stuff. I heard there's a massive hot box going on so definitely want to get some footage of that. And without any further ado, let's get right into the video, right into the questions and answers. All right, Death Trap Auto asks, I just grow autos in the ground, is that bad? Uh, no, you can grow autos in the ground. I would highly recommend you look for a really rich soil. I don't know what the soil is like around where you are. Before I started growing, before I planted, I started looking for the best soil. And the way I found the best soil area was I would look for very dense, uh, very lush vegetation of weeds like I, in my area I have uh, something called pigweed which is a, a, a weed that grows in really rich nutrient soil and it's a really good indicator when you just have massive bushes coming out of the ground that's where I'd want to grow so I would just uh, take out all those weeds uh, chop up that soil first I would dig it up then chop 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 with a shovel make it all nice and loose really uh, uh, break it all up that really helps the roots penetrate down and really get in there. Once the roots like get that penetration and able to grow in there good, uh, it's all it's all easy from there. If they don't have that penetration, if they struggle when they're small, they're kind of gonna stay small. And I have tried this. I have tried where I just didn't break up the soil. I just uh, cleared away the weeds, just planted, and compared to the ones where I broke up the soil, dug up the whole area and stuff, made it you know nice and uh, fluffy. Uh, those did way, way better. Pat G asks, if I LST my photo periods like I do my autoflowers and don't veg for a long time, do I need a trellis net? Was hoping I don't need it. I think it really depends on your genetics. And also, yeah, I think if you do a shorter veg time, the more stout it will be more likely. So you could be, you could be good on that if you go that route. Um, but it is sometimes genetics. Sometimes certain genetics are just more lanky and le more flimsy branches it seems like. And then some, I don't know if it's more indica leaning or if it's more, more sativa leaning, but certain ones have a more stout, more sturdy branches. And those ones I found don't really need uh, trellis nets. Like some of the autos, if they don't grow massive, they're not have if they don't have huge branches that could flop over then you don't really need trellis nets but if they're like my photos where I grow them pretty long for a long uh, veg cycle and then they got pretty lanky branches then you pretty much do need it or your plant will be flopping over the ground. Roll Me One Kenobi says have you ever just started and growed any photo periods on 12 and 12 from seed and if so, wouldn't it be around the same harvest as an auto? Because most of those would be pretty small anyways. So you're kind of correct. I would say the auto would probably finish a few days, maybe a week before a photo period. If you start a photo period from at 12 and 12, the whole, like its whole life. Um, I have tried it before. Technically, I didn't start from seed when I tried it. I did, I think, one week of veg or something like that. Like it was a very, very short, short veg. And uh, then I just flipped it a flower and it all came out pretty good. They did get like two, three feet high, some of them. So they definitely did work out and they did get around auto flower size. So for size wise, they did get pretty similar. But is there really a benefit to it? 
I don't really see it. I think you could get more out of it if you let them veg longer for photo periods. Yeah, I think it's just better off to let them veg at least a month or so. You're gonna get a better result. The only time I would recommend that is if you need a harvest done as fast as possible and you just, you can't wait. Um, like the time I did it, I was gonna be flying out a month later, so I just wanted to get it done as fast as possible, be done with the harvest, and then I was flying out of Canada. So uh, that was the only reason why I did it. I'm not sure why you would wanna do it, but usually time constraints is the main thing. Natural Leaf asks, Hi Doc, I'm new to autoflowers. What is the basic soil or is there a soil that can last the whole grow? So pretty much what it sounds like what you're looking for is super soil. I would definitely recommend uh, looking into super soil. You can actually make your own or if you wanted to buy it, there's a few companies out there who are really reputable uh, who sell super soils. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I have used a couple in the past. I had some really good results. If you want to go the organic route, that's definitely one way to do it. Todd Lewis asks, what should you keep your par at? So I've started to uh, kind of switch it up for our flowers compared to my photo periods. So photo periods, I'll take up to as far as 800, 850, sometimes 900, depending on uh, the canopy um, for par levels. And for auto flowers, I'm starting to go a bit lower. So I only give around like 650 now to around 700 tops. And then I, I usually stop around there. And it seems to produce amazing buds. So it, I don't know, auto flowers seem to, from what I've been finding, auto flowers seem to like a little bit less intensity and they still produce amazing rock hard solid buds. So um, the less par doesn't really seem to affect the uh, bud quality or like the thickness and denseness. So seedlings you start at like 200, slowly make your way up, uh, going into like the veg and stuff you'd want around like 300, 350, going up into 400 when you start uh, flowering a little bit, uh, pre-sexing, and then from that you want to ramp up to uh, the end. So like for autoflowers, 650, 700, you slowly ramp up to it. Uh, same for photo periods, you want to ramp up from 400 to slowly going up to like 700 to 800, 900. It's really important to slowly ramp up your, your light intensity, not just, just blast them right away because that does stress them out a little bit, so you kind of want to ease them into it. That's why I absolutely love having dimmers and lights. And this question kind of ties in with it. Uh, Growinish says, I determine light intensity by what the leaves tell me. If they pray, they can only take a little bit more. If they curl down, I back off a bit. So this is like the simple, you know, just telling by your eye. You definitely can do this, um, but it's also like measuring your nutrients without actually measuring. You're just going by eye. I think that's enough. Um, I don't like to go by that. I like to actually know what I'm actually giving them and it, it really just helps and helps troubleshoot many different things. And back in the day before I started measuring PAR, I remember I'd have issues and it would, would have been so easily to solve if I would have just measured it right away. Scott Hall says, my timer took a crap on me. My autos went into flower and now I'm running 24 seven. Them being autos, this should be fine. Uh, yes, uh, if it's stable, good genetics, you should be totally fine. Uh, on some autoflower sites, they actually run all their autos on 24-hour lights to pretty much uh, make sure they are 100% autoflowers. And that's how you can pretty much determine they are good, stable genetics. If they are flowering at 24-7 light, they are good to go. Now, just because they can, doesn't mean you should. I think like all plants, they do need some rest time. I like to give them at least minimum four hours. But usually for me, I usually do six hours of uh, darkness just to give them some rest because they are a living organism. Mary Elizabeth asks a uh, question on AirPods. Uh, what do you do when the roots start coming out of the bottom? The roots are on the saucer, but not sure if I should keep some runoff for the roots in the saucer or just keep it dry and dark. I wouldn't keep any runoff at the bottom. I would just uh, take it all out. Uh, it just air prunes, so it just dies off and then uh, goes back inside and then the roots grow inwards. So that's the whole point of air pots. Um, it's all about air pruning, so do not worry about that. Just let the roots dry up and shrivel. Budman says, got one photo period male and gonna isolate it with a autoflower female. Super curious of the results. Can I expect autoflower seeds or photo periods? Uh, pretty much what you're gonna get most likely is gonna be they're all gonna be photo periods with maybe 
a shorter flower cycle, maybe a little bit of tendency to auto flower, uh, but it, they will definitely not be full auto flowers. You're gonna have to do some back crossings and stuff to actually uh, bring out the auto flower trait. I'm not an expert on that. I haven't really created my own auto flower strain. I've actually done the same thing, and when I grew them out, they all came out photo periods. PK Green says, I was definitely under the impression that autos were not as potent as their photo period counterparts, but I've been pleasantly surprised. The few autos I've gotten to try Mephisto and Dutch Passion have been indistinguishable from flower purchased at local dispensaries as far as effects go. 100%. I guarantee that if I smoke my auto flowers with some random person, they will not be able to tell if it's auto flowers and they will look at the bag appeal and they'll say, holy shit, that is some of the most beautiful, most crisply dense buds I've seen in a long time. Yes, because that's how far auto flowers have come. And are they stronger than photo periods? No, they're not stronger because that photo periods are crazy strong right now. They're up to like almost, what, 28, 29, 30%, some of the really high ones. I don't even see a point of needing to go that high. Like, what, what's the point of just only chasing those numbers? What you want is the effects. You want the proper effects. You want it to feel like, you know, decently strong, but give you a nice feeling from it, right? So yes, 100% auto flowers can definitely match photo periods right now. So if you're on the fence for that reason, don't be, try some Mephisto, try some uh, Night Owl, you will be very happy with your results. All right, so that's it for this question and answer video, guys. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out the links down below. Also make sure you smash that like button and uh, leave a comment. For the next video, we're gonna be doing more question and answers, so leave a comment in the comment section down below. And until next time, guys, peace out, and we'll catch you guys later.